Hi everybody, this is Elizabeth with Live Simple, Live Free. And I'm going to be making some meatballs today with you and um, turn it into spaghetti with meatballs. Here we go. I was looking on my uh, my Thrive Life website, and they have recipes on there under a category called Learn. <laughs> and, um, I found this one for meatballs by Chef Todd, and I really like him, and he has come up with some really great recipes um, for this company. And so I'm going to try making this. I, um, I, I love using this food. It, it doesn't take a lot of preparation for me. And when I'm not sure what to cook, I always have stuff on hand, and I really appreciate that. So it's got like a 25 year shelf life and um, one of the things that's great, like I'll show you the mushrooms here, um, they have, there's, there's just no added ingredients. When you look here at what's in the mushrooms, it's mushrooms. And so um, I, I appreciate that. I just It's just basic, real, what they call clean food. So I'm going to make some meatballs out of it and it's going to be like all basically my Thrive Life stuff, except for I'm going to use regular ground beef, and I'll be adding some minced garlic and a little balsamic vinegar, and uh, the rest of it I'm just going to get out of my Thrive Life shelves. So let's put some meatballs together and make spaghetti meatballs. I'm going to get my onion, my onion going here, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to get my oven going here. Well, I got my oven going at 400, and it's interesting because the recipe says 375, but I watched Chef Todd and his son make the meatballs, and he actually put them in at 400. He said he likes for them to caramelize more, so I'm going to go with 400. Um, these are going to have cheese in them, and that cheese kind of melts, and then everything gets this nice caramelized outside on it. And it, it looked really good. All right, I have already put three tablespoons of water um, in my little dish here. Um, the recipe will be in the description below, you know, um, but I'll be kind of telling you what it is as I go along. And to that, I'm going to start adding some cheeses. The recipe calls for Monterey Jack and Parmesan. I have Parmesan and I have Colby Jack, and I'm going to use the Colby Jack. So I think that'll still work really well. So I'm going to put a quarter cup just of the, the shredded um, freeze-dried cheese. That stuff is more than yummy to eat right out of the can. <laughs> it's really good. Okay, so a quarter cup of the... Um, of this, my Monterey Jack mix. Okay, so that's a pretty, uh, that's a pretty easy way to shred up some cheese. So here's my Parmesan, and I need a tablespoon of this. So this, my measuring cups have tablespoons on the ends of them and, and measuring spoons. Okay, all right, so I have Parmesan in there. I need a tablespoon of the chopped onions, which I have right here. This is hands down one of my favorite things, this and the mushrooms. Oh, they're so good. All right, this doesn't have much left on it at all, so I'm gonna get a nice tablespoon of my chopped onions. Yum. And now I'm gonna be putting eggs in. Man, I love these eggs. They, they're not like your weird, you know, military powdered eggs sort of thing. Um, they're, they're just eggs, and um, you have, uh, it's called a scrambled egg mix, but oh, they're wonderful for cooking with. And um, you need like two tablespoons of this eggs to three tablespoons of water. But for this recipe, I'm gonna go ahead and just use one tablespoon of the scrambled egg mix. And I'm gonna go ahead and, um, I think that's, you know, a tablespoon is three teaspoons. Because I, my um, tablespoons. Too dirty to put into the eggs. There we go. Okay, that adds some egg to it. So we have uh, the two cheeses, onions, eggs, and the three tablespoons of water, which I already put in there. And you're supposed to just 
like allow it to sit for three minutes. I'm going to take this and just kind of stir it around just a little. But just going to let this sit for about three minutes while I get the rest of the ingredients all together. Cool. Well, I tell you what, I, as far as like onions, um, no tear onion and not having to chop cheese. Um, this is a little factoid about me uh, that people don't realize. But I'm very grateful this cheese is already grated. Um, I've got a pretty good mandolin, which I can use. It's got a protective cover on it. But years ago, I was grating some cheese. And I accidentally got down too far, and I sort of grated some me into it. And I have this thing about being freaked out about graters ever since. So I don't mind using a mandolin if I've got the protective cover thing on it. But boy, am I grateful that this stuff is already grated and ready to go. So anyway, just, you know, not too many people know that about me. So, okay. Okay, I have a pound of meat in here. Um, just basic ground beef. Um, can't use the Thrive Life beef for this because this needs to be all squishable together. So, all right. To that, I'm going to put in um, a teaspoon of minced garlic. Now, um, you, I can get this from Thrive Life, but today I just happen to have some, like, minced garlic that I had in the fridge. So... Oh, love garlic. I'm going to put a teaspoon of it in. There we go. A generous teaspoon. Garlic's one of my favorite things. Now I'm going to be putting in some green onions. Once again, this... Oh, there's my onions. This couldn't be easier. Oh, let's see. Yeah. Green onions. Ingredients, green onions. Okay, good. <laughs> Alrighty, a uh, tablespoon. Mm. Oh, that smells so good. Oh my goodness. Yeah. My sister got me that one time when I was up in Maine. And it's exactly a tablespoon. I love it. Okay. Alright, so we've got beef garlic, green onions. I'm going to put some Italian seasoning in. Here we go. I, this is actually the Thrive Seasonings, Italian seasoning blend. And I need a teaspoon. My teaspoon's dirty. I'm just going to do four quarters. It's quick. There we go. <laughs> I should have everything all set out in my nice little bowls and all that. Um, but this is pretty organically how I cook. <laughs> so... Now, the recipe also calls for a teaspoon of the Thrive Chef's Choice, which is a really nice seasoning blend. I don't happen to have that right now. Um, but I've got garlic in here, and I have good Italian seasoning. I think it's going to be just fine. So, okay. I've got to look back through here. Beef, garlic, green onions, Italian seasoning. Okay. And the other ingredient I need here is a teaspoon of balsamic vinegar. Balsamic vinegar is so good. Mm. I'm not real fond of vinegar, but the balsamic vinegar is wonderful. There we go. Add some good, rich flavor there. Just a little nice tartness. Okay, or as a, a professional cook would say, add some nice acidity. I hear that when I watch cooking shows. Okay, and I'm just going to get my hands in here and skamoosh this all together. Skamoosh. Yeah, it's just getting all, it, see, it's definitely being skamooshed, you can tell. That's a here. technical cooking term. Yes, yeah, skamooshed. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Okay, so, beef, garlic, green onions, the seasoning, and balsamic vinegar. Okay, and then I'm going to take my cheese mixture and just mix that in by hand. There's just some things that you just kind of need to do by hand. Skamoosh. Well, especially skamooshing, yes. All right. I have never done meatballs before that actually had cheese in them. It sounds so good. Kind of an Italian smell coming off of this, of course, because of the Italian seasoning and the nice garlic. Okay. All right, oven's all heated up. Let's see if we can turn these into meatballs and uh, make a really nice dinner today. Okay, I think this solution is coming along just fine. Okay, so I have my little nifty like, cookie or meatball scooper here. Um, 
those bowls I've been using, this, uh, sometimes the mugs you can see me use. I just love Pioneer Woman stuff, so I had to give her a, you know, shout out. I, I love her stuff. And I'm not uh, affiliated with her in any way. I'm just, I'm just saying I think her stuff's so pretty. My favorite knife is one of hers. <laughs> okay, let me just scoop these guys up. Now what'll happen is I'll start out just plopping them on here, trying to get them all pretty uniform so that they'll cook evenly. And then they'll have to be rounded, and I'll uh, show you that step two. So I have these all scooped out. It looks like it's making about 20. Um, and I'll watch them because if the size is a little different than Chef Todd's recipe, I'll just make sure they don't get overdone, but I think they'll be fine. So at this point, then, you can see with these three, I've just taken um, and just gently rolled them into meatballs. So, here they are. There they are, all ready to go. I think I got them pretty uniform. And um, they're supposed to go into the oven for about 10 minutes. So I'm going to go pop them in. Now we've got the meatballs cooking. And I just realized I've been calling it like spaghetti, uh, getting the impression that I'm making a tomato-based spaghetti and meatballs. But I'm actually not. Um, I have added a few things back into my diet, but nightshades is not one of them. And I still, of course, am being very careful, 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 very careful to go gluten-free. So I'm actually going to do a... Um, oh, goodness what's that word again alfredo. Um, thank you <laughs> for some reason i can't remember alfredo today but i'm going to make an alfredo sauce now this is nobody's fancy recipe i'm just kind of putting this together myself i kind of know what i want in it and then we've got some uh, pasta for bill and some gluten-free stuff for me that's already boiling so while the meatballs are cooking so now one of the first things i'm going to do is go ahead and get my mushrooms um, into I've got a little bit of water here in my pan and um, there we go. I'm not measuring fancy but I like a lot of mushrooms in it so I'm going to put some mushrooms in once again I love the fact oh these are oh it smells so good I love the fact that I don't have to fuss with cutting them up and stuff but the main thing is I never have dead wilty mushrooms that I didn't use in time I really appreciate that. I just literally don't have waste because I don't cook more than I need um, unless I plan on leftovers and it doesn't ever sit around until it turns bad. So I do really appreciate that. Now I'm going to go ahead and um, put in some of the actual Italian seasoning. There we go. I'm kind, I'm kind of the kind of cook that I don't really measure that much when I'm cooking. I measure when I'm baking. I don't necessarily measure all that much when I'm cooking because I just kind of put in what looks like it's right and tastes right. Some Definitely some more lovely garlic. There we go. Okay. Now I'm going to add just... Um, a little salt and pepper, especially in something that's a white sauce. I don't want too much salt, um, but I definitely like the pepper in there. So, um, these mushrooms are already starting to absorb, like re refresh in the water. So, this is one of my favorite things. Um, I really love using the tomato base. Um, they call them mother sauces. Um, I love the tomato base when I'm making, you know, Bill or somebody's spaghetti, regular spaghetti. This is the bechamel. It's the white sauce. Um, gluten-free, and they have an espanola, which is the beef, the tomato, velute, which is chicken, and then the tomato base, which is kind of a marinara. Um, and so you can put meat just about any sauce with these, but I just love these things. Now what I like to do, and one of the reasons why I'm not, um, I mean, a little careful to watch my salt is because, you know, this flavoring base is going to have a little hint of a saltness to it already, so I want to be careful not to overdo it. All right. Brand new one, gonna open it. You know, these last a very long time. Um, they don't go bad. So 
one. <clears throat> oh, right. Let's see. All right, I'm just going to... I don't like to add this just right to water because I have a tendency to struggle with it getting lumpy. So this is just something that I like to do when I'm doing any kind of a sauce. And it, it saves me a lot of lumpifying issues. All right, I'm going to start out with about this much. That's probably half a cup, maybe almost two-thirds of a cup. All right, I'm going to ask my cameraman if he'll just go put a little bit of water in this for me. Well, I don't know how much. Oh, no, just dump some in there, just so it's all wet. That's all that'll matter. I've got butter, and I've got actually the kind of milk I've been using. I've got coconut milk here. That's it. Great. Just some water in there. Now, and you don't want to use hot, um, just regular water, you know, because um, you don't want it to pop. But I've got a nice seal on here, and I'm just going to shake it, shake it, shake it. Okay. At this point, I think I'll add some of the coconut milk. Yeah. It thickens beautifully. I'm going to add some coconut milk. If this looks like I'm improvising, it's because I'm improvising. But I can usually make a pretty nice uh, Alfredo sauce this way. Hold on nice and tight. Yeah. That sound was my baking uh, cookie um, pan that I've got the meatballs on adjusting in the heat. It makes a funny popping sound. There we go, now. Okay, I'm going to get this to the stove and start getting it um, heating up. Now, if my flavor is good, but I need it to be a little bit thicker, I'll probably use a little bit of cornstarch. Oh yeah, this is oh, beautiful stuff. And I'll be putting that in with my little bit of water and my mushrooms here. And then I'm going to add some butter. And yeah, we'll go from there. Okay. Meatballs are coming out. Oh, they look wonderful. And just like with any kind of meat, once it's cooked, it's very important to let it rest for a few minutes. It's very important for the juiciness and everything. So while I'm finishing everything else up, I'm going to be resting my new meatballs. I've started heating up my mushrooms and the garlic and the seasoning in here, a little bit of salt and pepper. I'm going to mix this in. And then if it needs more of this flavor, I'll add more to it. Um, and if it needs to be a little thicker, if the flavor's good, then I'll add a little cornstarch. But I'm going to hang on to this because I'll use this to mix up a little bit more. Yeah. All right, need to let that start heating up. We'll go from there. All right, I'm going to add at least a good half cup of the Parmesan to this sauce. It doesn't have to be, you know, re-moisturized or refreshed or anything. That'll happen right there in the sauce. I've added a little bit of butter, a couple of tablespoons. This flavor is good. It's just on the edge of what I really want. So I am adding some cornstarch, a little bit more of the bechamel mix, a little bit more garlic, a little bit more salt and pepper, and a little bit more um, Italian seasoning mix with some of the coconut milk. And I think this is going to finish it up. And of course the cornstarch will help it thicken a lot. That looks good. I think that's going to have a good flavor now. I don't want to overdo it, but I want a nice rich flavor. Okay. Okay, my sauce is ready. Um, it just putting things together until it tasted just the way I wanted. I did. I didn't give you exact measurements, but I did tell you everything I put in it. Um, it's like a really nice, rich mushroom soup with a little hint of the Parmesan cheese. I have all of my beautiful meatballs in here. This is one of the Pioneer Woman bowls that I love so much. 
and I'm going to mix these together. This kind of makes it sort of a Swedish meatball recipe using a, a white sauce like this. So it makes my meatball Alfredo. <laughs> you know, creativity when you're cooking is fun. Things don't have to be just exactly a certain way. Um, you can combine amazing things together. That's how they came up with wonderful stuff like paella um, and um, a lot of the Cajun cooking, putting things together that I would not have thought of putting together, but it works. Okay, we're going to serve ourselves, and you guys get to watch us <clears throat> enjoying this. Thank you, Lord, for your love and for your many blessings. Thank you for this food and for your provision for us. We love you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, okay, so. you make uh, spaghetti sauce, meat sauce a lot. I don't know if I ever remember you making meatball sauce before. This will be very interesting. Yeah, I don't think I ever have. Uh -uh. Certainly not with an Alfredo style sauce. So yeah, that's just like Swedish meatballs. <laughs> oh, I'm excited. This is cool. Yep. Here you go, dear one. We Looks like we're going to definitely have some good leftovers, which we will certainly use for another meal. There we go. Very good. Is it good? Very good meatballs, yep. Excellent. <laughs> Neat. It's just something different I've never really tried mm -hmm. before. Mmm. 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 Oh, yeah. Good job, dear one. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for being my cameraman. You try the meatball here. Mmm. <clears throat> That tastes like a real meatball. Thank you for joining with me today, trying this recipe. It was very good. Um, the, uh, our uh, Thrive Life website link is below in the description. It's in the description below if you'd like to look at some recipes or see any of the food that I used. But um, it's delicious. I right, love you guys. Um, live simple, live free. And we love you and be blessed. We'll see you soon.